As you probably know, um, lithography is a total pain in the ass. But I'm going to show you a way to do it um, using a method that's been around for a while now called um, pronto plates, which are actually polyester um, printing plates that have been used in the offset printing industry. I'm currently working on a series of prints called um, Plate of Whoop Ass. This is Cup of Whoop Ass. And I've printed the first color on this plate. And what we're going to do next is um, show you how to print subsequent colors. You can start out with something other than the main image, but I thought this would be easy to do. And um, as you can see, I've printed it in a kind of light brown. So the subsequent colors are going to be printed uh, mostly darker than these around this original image. This is the Pronto plate that I printed the first image from. As you can see, it's just um, a, a piece of uh, transparent, I mean translucent sort of paper. I can, I can see some image through the back, which is also part of the beauty of it because Unlike fooling around with, with registration marks and everything, I only do that for the first print. Then I can put the image on a light table, lay it across the back, shine the light through it, and see exactly where to register it, which I'll be showing you. Next, I want to show you some very important steps in image making. I have here a folder of many different apps that I use. You know, you'll find ones that you like. But one of them, for example, is this one, Photo Cutout. And if I tap that and tap on my images, and I go up here to All Photos, I'm going to select an image. Um, doesn't matter which one. Let's Let's take this one. Cancel the tu tutorial. Now, what, I'm, what I can do with this is, let's say I want to just use this vase here. I will select out the vase, and I have to do this in one motion. So let's draw quickly around here. And now I've, I've selected an image. Okay, now I'm going to go down here and select background. And I'll say, choose your own background. Go back here to all photos again. And again, this is just for an example. Um, we'll, we'll take this background up here and you see that the the vase is sitting on that ink wash background I can move it around I can tilt it I can expand it make it smaller whatever so let, let's say we're gonna tilt it like that now I will now I'll go down here to erase and start cutting away the uh, the edges up to where the vase was. Um, you don't even have to be too careful with this. Because you can go back to unerase and clean it up a little bit so that maybe you want a white edge around there or an edge of your background showing a little bit more. Okay? And, and so you're then you um, you say you're finished up here, and you say share the final image, and I'm going to select save image. Okay. Now, when I go back to my photos, that will be... Uh, the last 
image that I made. It's right here. Open that up. And, and there it is. Now, let's say this is an image that I want to keep. Then what I'm going to do is use another app to make sure it's the right size. I'm going back to my selection of photo apps. I'm going to select I resize. Get that image again, which is right here. Say OK. And select Resize Advanced. Now, I don't know if you can see these numbers here, but what I want my images to be, I want all of them to be 300 dpi and a height of 10 inches. So I'm going to change this to 300, height 10 inches. and say OK. And it's going to make a new image right there. The next thing I want to do is um, print out everything else but this area in the explosion in a different color. I haven't actually decided what color it's going to be yet, but the what I'm going to need to do is get rid of Select the bigger tool. Let's get rid of everything but the explosion. And again, I'm just taking all this away. And I know that it's going to print, you know, it's going to uh, be on the plate exactly where it should be because I'm working from the original image each time. There are a few other little tricks I've discovered in getting this to um, print the right size. And, and I'm trying to do everything on the iPad because it's so convenient. I mean, I've done lots of imagery on a computer, but boy, when you can draw directly on the iPad and print directly from the iPad, um, in order to do that, the most convenient thing is to have a, a networked printer. That is one that uh, allows you to just select an image and, and air print and say go directly to the printer and print it out. It's right there in my studio. I walk over to the other room where I keep the printer and, you know, I'm ready to go very quickly. Whereas in in old in olden times, when I used to print with stones or metal plates, I would spend days preparing the image, and at least a whole day um, rolling up a print. Sometimes using this method, I I print two runs in in an afternoon. So, anyway. So I'm, as you can see, I'm um, blocking all of this out now. Okay. Um, now I'm, I'm back in my main photo album, and I don't want to end up with a million of these things, so I'm going to take that first one and delete it. So the one that's left now is the one that's properly sized. However, if I were to just print onto the frontal plate from, from this, from the iPad, using the air print, it would print out way too small. So the next step that I always have to do, and I would imagine you will too, is upload this up here to my Google Drive, and I select my drive, and then I have a folder called Pronto Plate. Say save here, 
upload and the image is uploading. The reason I do this is that then I will actually go to the Google Drive image, find that image, and print it from there, printing it from Google Drive. Then it prints out the right size. So every one of these prints that I do is 300 dpi, 10 inches, which means that you can always register them over the top of each other. You have to make sure that everything is exactly the same if you're when you're positioning these prints. Here is a bowl where I sponge the dirty water into. This bowl is always kept clean. And to the bowl of water, I'm going to add a bit of gum arabic that also has been mixed with some white vinegar which is acetic acid. Um, if you do any lithography you know that the the gum arabic uh, which we usually put directly on the plate helps seal the light areas. The principle quickly behind lithography is that greasy areas except grease and so in this case the printout is made of um, print toner which is kind of a, a plastic base and we want to keep the rest of it from accepting the ink so we have a grease loving area and a water loving area uh, the water with the gum arabic and vinegar in it will help uh, keep the ink from accepting in, in the blank areas. If I were to roll over this plate right now without sponging it with this water first, it would, the whole thing would just ink up with that the color of ink that I've uh, prepared. Uh, now, it's, it's in place. I don't care about the registration marks or anything. I will sponge that off a little bit. And hopefully, when I start inking it, the ink will adhere to to that area. So let's give her a try. You might not see much happening. That's why we uh, roll a proof. Now it got a little much ink in it right there, so sponge that off. Uh, another beautiful thing about this method is that you don't have to do anything to prepare it. It's Once it comes out of the printer, the plate is ready to accept the ink. I'm going to give it about three different coats before I run a proof on a piece of newsprint. The next step is to take the pronto plate to the light table where I have one of my prints and I'm going to lay it down here and try to line up this plate carefully with the location of the original print. Now I will take this, turn it upside down and take it to the press. The paper is now laid on the press with the pronto plate below it, carefully lining it up so it didn't move when I transferred it over from my light table. Unlike an etching press, you don't use um, press blankets, but a nice piece of cardboard backing. I'm going to push this whole unit up so it's right under the press roller. Put the cardboard on there. Crank her through. And back. You should do it in all one smooth motion if you can. Just take the print off and that's what we've got now. And here are a few of the finished prints.
with many colors, many applications. Dog dish of whoop ass. Vase of whoop ass. And plate of whoop ass. You notice.